All right, everybody. Uh, welcome to our workshop on how to do research and get published. Today, um, th we will be talking about how to perform a literature review to optimize your research paper. Thank you so much for joining us today. To get started, I I'd like to present you to the team that will be part of this conversation. So first, Jessica Offenberger is a publishing editor on the STM Journal Editorials team. She manages a range of science and medicine journals, working with editors and societies to develop new strategies, as well as problem solve. During her time at SAGE, she has also worked closely with the author team to create and develop resources to help early career researchers across disciplines better understand the publishing process and publish their research. Jessica has a background in project management, marketing, business development, and self-publishing. She holds a Bachelor of Arts in Journalism from Michigan State University and is based in Los Angeles. Next, Lauren Bauman is an editorial specialist working primarily with social science titles at SAGE. She's a former researcher, instructor, and graduate student at the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, where, where she earned her MA in political science. Next, Colleen Cordy is an associate professor emerita at the University of Illinois Chicago College of Nursing, where she served as director of the PhD program and taught research design and methods. She's also deputy ed editor of Substance Abuse Journal, which is soon to be the Substance Use and Addiction Journal. Dr. Cordy's program of research is focused on the drinker identity as a cognitive vulnerability for alcohol use and alcohol problems. She has published widely in interdisciplinary substance use journals, as well as nursing research and clinical journals. She is a fellow in the American Academy of Nursing, and her research has been recognized by the Research Society on Alcoholism, the Midwest Nursing Research Society, and the Association for Multi Multidisciplinary Education and Research in Substance Use and Addiction. Next, Charles Cornell is Professor of Clinical Orthopedic Surgery at Weill Cornell Uni uh, College of Medicine and an attending orthopedic surgeon at the Hospital for Special Surgery in New York City. He is an Emeritus Director at the Department of Orthopedic Surgery at Hospital for Special Surgery and Chairman of the Department of Orthopedic Surgery surgery at Stanford Health in Stanford, Connecticut. He was the first clinical director of the HSS Stanford Coll a Collaboration in Orthopedic Surgery. Dr. Cornell is the current editor-in-chief of HSS Journal. Dr. Cornell is also a deputy editor for clinical orthopedics and related research, basic science section editor for the Journal of Orthopedic Trauma, and an elite reviewer for the Journal of Bone and Joint Surgery. Dr. Cornell's practice and research interests have uh, focused on adult reconstruction, trauma, and metabolic bone diseases. He is author of 130 word, 131 journal articles and co-editor of the textbook, Perioperative Care of the Orthopedic Patient. And last, I am Sean Skarsberg, a marketing manager on the author marketing team at SAGE. My, my primary role is to provide support to authors and reviewers as they move through the publishing process with a particular focus on providing targeted resources to provide support at the appropriate time in the publication process. I have a BA in history from Manhattan College and an MA in history from Hunter College, and I am based out of New York. So today, um, we're happy to offer you a presentation followed by a question and answer session. So we please ask that you post your questions in the Q&A box. We'll do our best to answer as many questions as we can live, but due to time constraints, we won't be able to answer every question, and we'll follow up as appropriate after the presentation. But please, as you look through the Q&A function, please find the questions that you find most appropriate and like them. And we will start with the questions that have the most number of upvotes at the uh, latter portion of the webinar. So today, um, I want to start with this timeline, which uh, is a typical author journey, moving from the early stages of securing funding, conducting research, all the way through peer review and publication. Today, we're focusing on how to perform a literature review to optimize your research paper, specifically to develop the background of your paper, which spans across a number of points in, at, in this timeline. We encourage you to go back and watch recordings of other topics we've covered in this series, including how to write and format a manuscript and how to navigate the peer review process. And now I'll be handing it over to Lauren. Great, thank you for the introduction, Sean. Um, and wonderful to be with you all today. Uh, before we can start talking a bit more about the nitty gritty, you first need to define, right, what are we actually talking about? What is a literature review and what does it mean to conduct one? Um, so for a basic uh, definition of what a literature review is, 
A literature review is a summary and evaluation of, current, of the current landscape of research on your topic of interest. These will include reviews of the theories, methodologies, and results related to your research, right? So it's not just one or a few things. Usually you're going to be looking at multiple elements of your research review. Now, there are multiple different types of research reviews. Narrative ones, which are your more kind of classic um, meta-analyses, which get more into kind of the technical elements. Scoping reviews, which by its name, right, obviously mean that it's much broader in scope, will be um, a lot longer. But we are not going to be talking about some of these long-form literature reviews, as you can tell by the title of uh, the presentation, right, what we're focusing on today is how to conduct and write a literature review to help support your research paper, right? So we are not going to be focusing on these longer forms. If you are, are interested in learning a bit more about how to write these different types of literature reviews, let us know um, in the comments or, or add that to your questions, because um, we can include it for future topics for this presentation. But the focus for today, right, is how to conduct a literature review to write your research paper. Now, why are we writing a literature review? Why are we conducting a literature review? There's many reasons why this is helpful. First, you need to be able to introduce your reader to the topic, right? You need to provide them some sort of context to make sure that they understand what you're talking about, right? So it helps to contextualize your research topic in the current relevant research. You obviously are not the first person to probably be studying whatever topic you're looking at, right? So you wanna make sure that you understand what other people are saying, what their results have been related to your research question, right? It also helps to show that you actually have expertise in the field, right? That you are have engaged in other work, so you can actually uh, pose yourself and show yourself as an expert on this topic, um, which will make people believe in your results even more. And re uh, conducting research reviews and doing that literature review um, will help you to develop your own theory, think about different methodological frameworks for your own research, right? You'll see what other folks have tried within their research that should help inform your own research as you're looking at what questions you're asking and how to conduct your work. Now, starting your literature review process. The first thing you need to think about as you're starting your literature review is thinking about how you're defining the scope of your research topic, right? Now, some of you at this point might already be coming in knowing that you already have funding to discuss and look at a research question. If you do, that's great. But if you're starting kind of fresh, maybe you know that generally you're interested in political systems, right? But you don't exactly know maybe where are there gaps in the literature, what is of interest. This is where doing uh, conducting a literature review, right, and reading the literature in that field can be helpful. So it can help you kind of figure out what are potential research questions that could be interesting, um, what are holes or gaps within the research, maybe what are conflicting uh, results that have happened so far within the literature of people studying similar questions, and you can figure out maybe there's methodologies, right, that could help fill in those gaps. Right, but you want to first use this reading, right, use this literature review to start to think about what is going to be your topic and how kind of broad or narrow it needs to be, right? So as you're starting to do this work, what you want to do once you have your question in mind is start broad, right? Think about and gather as much information that you can um, and start narrowing until you have your specific research question that you want to explore. Once you have that, as you're doing your literature review, you want to start thinking about how you can help kind of develop your own theory, right? So you're going to ask yourself questions like, what theories are most relevant to your research question? What theories have been tested in using what methodologies? And what gaps exist in the literature, right? So you'll use all of these uh, concurrent texts to help you kind of define your own research question, the methods that you'll use, um, and make sure that you're answering something relevant to the field. And then finally, um, as you're starting your uh, literature review, you want to focus on what's important um, to your research question, right? You want to make sure that uh, while you're going to be doing a bunch of reading, that you want to make sure that all the work is relevant actually to your decided on research question, right? So these might be asking yourself questions like, what does your hypothesis support or refute? Or what does your ability, um, your theory build off of? Now, as you're starting to think about uh, conducting your literature review, 
the most important part, right, is finding that literature, right? So how do you find the correct literature to make sure that you're focusing on the correct authors, articles to help you build your own literature review? The best resource that you have if you are part of a university or institution is to work with your librarian. They are an excellent, often underutilized resource. So if you are a part of a university or institution, go to your librarian. They will know where to look, especially if they are divided by fields, right? A lot of universities will have librarians for specific majors or fields. Go talk to them. They are genuinely some of the most helpful individuals. Um, so that is the first step I would recommend that you take. After talking to your librarian, who will give you so many resources, other places that you can look. Um, if you've already started reading some stuff related to your topic, um, a really helpful thing is to look at uh, the reference pages for those articles or books, right? You'll see what they are citing, and those are other places that you can start reading and looking to see, right, what are they citing? Um, it's a natural place to look as you're conducting um, your reading for your literature review. And then finally, uh, looking at article and research databases um, is a really useful thing. You can use optimized searches to find things related to your topic. So that could be things like Scopus, Web of Science. Obviously, you can look at Sage Journal. We have search features as well. Um, PubMed, if you're things in the medical field. Psych Info, if you're doing psychology research. Eric, related to education research. And there's also different search engines. Um, that are related to specific fields as well. So those will be helpful as you figure out what your research topic is and you can narrow it and find the best research to help support um, your growing literature review. Now you've started doing your reading, right? You have articles, you have books that you're doing. How do you make sure that you focus, right? While you're reading and note-taking and evaluating. So first, Make sure that you don't get scared away by reading a bunch of articles. You never know what's gonna spark that inspiration, what is gonna be useful, what might be helpful as you're thinking about developing your theory, thinking about methodologies. So my first suggestion is to read as much as possible. Um, and it's okay if you read articles or books that end up not influencing your final research question and your results, uh, because knowledge is beautiful. So don't be afraid to read, read, read as much as possible. Um, or skim is more like what will probably happen, right? So you're starting to read articles. How do you make sure that you're focusing and taking notes on the correct things? Um, because it can take a lot of time to read and take notes. So what are the things you should be focusing on, right? Well, first is making sure that you're thinking about what theories these related research articles are doing, right? What are common connecting theories and themes that you're seeing across the literature, right? What are these common things that are popping up? Are these things that you think uh, have good evidence for in those papers? Or do you think that maybe there are common assumptions across these connected themes that maybe could be explored more, right? These will all be things that'll help you better kind of investigate your own research topic as you're developing your own theories, methodologies, and eventually doing and conducting the research. Um, important things to pay attention as well as you're looking at the results and conclusion sections, right, is what is actually supported, right? when they create these hypotheses and conduct the research, are you finding that these authors are, are actually being supported in the work that they're doing, right? Are there any contradictory results? There are, sometimes are these big questions as a political scientist, one of the big things that are studied in comparative politics is uh, the relationship between economics and democracy and within the field, right? Just asking that one question, you'll have different results asking, even though they're asking the same question, right? So maybe there's something interesting in there to explore, right? Why are they getting contradictory results? Is it the methods that they're using? Are they maybe using data sets that um, are flawed in certain ways? Think about, right, what these different results and contrary results might mean. Um, as you're reading and looking at the results as well, you might think about, okay, maybe they're testing one part of their question, but there's other related questions that aren't. So think about what is tested what versus what isn't. Um, and all these things will help you in defining your own research question, as well as um, in theory building and selecting methodologies. Now, a helpful resource uh, as you're thinking about, okay, I... I'm collecting all these articles, I'm trying to take notes, but how do I organize them in a way that is logical and that can help me? Um, one useful too is an annotated bibliography. 
It's an annotated bibliography. If you don't know, it's exactly as it sounds. It's a list of the citations uh, to books, articles, and documents and you uh, make annotations based off of them, right? You're taking those notes based off of them. And the bibliographies can be really useful when you're reading and note-taking, as I noted. Um, they often can be included directly into your uh, citation reference systems. Um, so I recommend that if you do have a citation reference system that you use, that you can actually take those notes directly um, in those systems. What are things that you'll want to be taking notes on as you're doing your annotated bibliographies. Well, this will be um, things like uh, making sure that you're summarizing the main points of the articles, right? So reflecting upon what is the research question and what did they find? Um, think about, but beyond just simple summaries, right? Because when you're writing your annotated or when you're writing your literature reviews, uh, you don't wanna just summarize the work, right? You wanna be uh, critical and reflective upon those work. So think about, um, um, including assessments, right, of those articles. Uh, how do they answer the research questions? Do you think that the methodologies that they use were appropriate? Um, make sure that you include some level of critique as is appropriate when you're um, creating your annotated bibliographies. And then finally, uh, make sure you include some sort of reflections, right? Uh, make notes about how this article is maybe helpful or helps you develop your own theory or helps you maybe think about your own research question. Um, but in uh, these do not need to be long as you're taking notes, but make sure that you include the important things as uh, you're helping to develop your own theories um, and, and prepare to conduct your own research. Great. Thank you, Lauren. And uh, hello, everyone around the world. Thank you so much for joining us. We're excited to, to have you here today. So I'm going to be covering the actually writing your literature review. So to start off, I want to focus on organizing and outlining the literature review and give you some tips around that. Now that you have done all the necessary reading and research, you can start incorporating your literature review into your research paper. There is no one way to incorporate your literature review into your research article, but you may consider the following ways to organize your literature review section of your research paper. Chronological. First of all, using time of research articles to organize our lit review by date of publication. Makes sense. Thematic, you can organize by the different themes that are essential to your research question. Methodological, organized by the methods used in the related literature. Or theoretical, by the main theories relevant to your research question. While you may organize your literature review in different ways, when incorporating your literature review, there are a few key components that you should include. Your research question. Be sure it is clear in your paper the research question you are asking. This should be made very clear in your introduction. Be sure to define any key concepts that are important to your research question and any proposed theories and hypotheses. When it comes to theoretical landscape, having conducted a literature review, you should know what the main theories are related to your research topic. Put yourself in the position of a reviewer and consider what alternative theories may be better, may better answer your research question. These alternative theories should be addressed when necessary in your research paper. Remember, you need to convince your readers that your explanation is the best to answer your research question. So do not, so do not ignore counter arguments or alternative explanations. Depending on your research question, you may want to address methodologies used in your field of interest and any strengths and limitations of your chosen methodology and any others not used. Last but not least, results. If your research question has been addressed by others or similar questions have been addressed, be sure to explain the results discovered so far by others. This is especially important if there have been contradictory results by different researchers so that you can explain what your research helps to better understand any contradictory results. When incorporating your literature review, I wanted to share some additional tips to keep in mind. 
Don't just summarize. Summarize only to the extent that it is necessary to provide context for your research question. Instead, focus more on synthesis and criticism. So with that, include synthesis and criticism. As you write your paper and incorporate your literature review, you will need to consider how theories relate and inform your own expectations and hypotheses, and thus synthesis is critical. Additionally, as you consider and tackle alternative explanations, do not shy away from criticism of alternative theories to help bolster your own theory. Stay focused on your research question. While you have read about the topic extensively, be sure to only include information that is relevant to your research question and contextualize and explain your th theory and or hypothesis. Only use quotes when the exact words are helpful and necessary. So use quotes sparingly. For example, it may be appropriate to use quotes when defining key terms. And be careful when paraphrasing. Accurately attribute theories and ideas that are not yours. So make sure to include that, uh, make sure to cite properly and include those in your reference list. If you have a separate literature review section of your research paper, it will often sit after the introduction. You will likely utilize your literature review throughout your paper, including the introduction, discussion section, and conclusion. Contextual information and theory building may sit as part of the introduction and conclusion sections. When developing your methods and analysis section, be sure to consider what you have learned about others' methods and analyses sections. The research landscape can help you decide what methodology norms are for your field and how to display and discuss your results. You may also want to consider how your results compare to others who have done research on a similar or the same research question. As it goes through to editing, Right, you're, you're getting ready, you're making it more concise, it's starting to all come together. Keep in mind journals often have strict word counts. This means you need to think critically about what is essential to include versus not include from your literature review. As you're narrowing things down and making edits to your paper, consider the following. How much space should you devote to discussing your literature review? What are the most essential items that need to be included in your paper, whether that's context, definitions, methodologies? Are you utilizing the best quotes? Paraphrasing may help you with saving space, so only, only utilize direct quotes when necessary. While incorporating your literature review is important, it can often be trimmed down to save space for the meat and potatoes of your research article, the explanation of your research and experiment and its results. Some common mistakes to avoid, including sources that do not directly relate to your research question. Keep it relevant, keep it topical, so make sure to only focus on what's related to your research question. Another common mistake, do not sufficiently define the theories and concepts most central to your argument. So focus on that, again, focus on that research question and focus on those theories and concepts that are most central. Another mistake to avoid is if you're only summarizing uh, the literature and not synthesizing or critiquing the literature. So going back to what I had recommend, really focus on the synthesis and criticism. So as you're writing your paper and incorporating your literature review, you consider how theories relate and inform your own expectations and hypotheses, and that synthesis is critical. So, and again, a reminder, don't shy away from criticism of alternative theories because this can help bolster your own theory. And another mistake is only including literature that supports your argument. Um, so just as I mentioned, you could look at critiquing literature. 
remember, there's going to be multiple people conducting peer review on your paper. And there might be, there's different viewpoints, different perspectives, and different vantage points so that, you know, reviewer one might see something, but reviewer two might push back. So try to think about your paper, your research question, and what literature is out there, how it can all critique and relate to everything, and how they might push back on your argument. So try to anticipate and think about that in advance. So with that, I would like to, to uh, just pass it over to, uh, let's start with uh, Colleen. And we'll start with you to share some tips and tricks of what you've done so far and uh, what you want to add. Hey, welcome uh, to everybody. I was uh, madly taking notes myself as I saw questions flying by and I, I, I uh, was having a little bit of a hard time following them all. So, uh, but I was, you know, some of the, the things are that the length of the lit review for a, uh, a research paper would vary depending upon the journal. So you would have to look at the journal and look at their, look at the papers in that journal. So some journals have a very short background section. Some have a very lengthy background section. So, sometimes that's discipline specific, but even with across disciplines and within disciplines, there are some differences. So think about um, that. But your lit review should be as comprehensive as possible. You may not be including every word that you note take in your actual lit review. Um, uh, so what else did I see here? Somebody asked about the quality of, of papers. Um, how do you tell the quality of one paper versus another? Journals are indexed. And so you um, in, there's science citation index in uh, the library uh, settings. And you, you can uh, look at, you know, because you're going to see a ton of different things and it's hard to know well, which ones are the most relevant, which ones are the most important. I would go with the, uh, the ones that are in uh, database papers that are in journals that have higher impact factors. And uh, because they're more likely to be, uh, they're, they're at a higher level in terms of the, uh, when they're reviewed before publication, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I don't want to take up all the all the time. So, uh, Charles, do you want to go ahead, or I, I can pipe in and do we answer these questions now? First of all, Jessica. Well, let's pass it over to Charles and and okay. uh, give some additional tips. And uh, you're you're not taking up too much time. This is a great discussion. So feel free to, to keep going, but we'll pass it over to you, Charles. Yes, thank you. Um, and welcome to everyone on the on the webinar. Um, I do want to reiterate a comment that Lauren made, which is to use your librarian. So there are mechanical steps to doing literature searches, and uh, you have to learn to use the terms that are called Boolean operators, and your librarian will help you do that so that your, your search is efficient, and um, and focused on the actual questions that you're asking. I, I think the other comments are there's so there are different types of literature reviews. So when I was researching for uh, a thesis that I wrote, uh, I spent a year studying and writing and uh, organizing a thesis. And my literature review for that was enormous because I was trying to prove to my uh, professors that I had studied the literature thoroughly and I was very familiar with it and I made myself an expert on it. When you're writing a research paper, things have to be much more focused. So you have to distill that down to the specific questions you're asking or posing. And you need to use the literature uh, to create the rationale for those questions. So um, the comments that uh, uh, Lauren and Jessica made are very appropriate. Um, start widely, narrow it down. Remember to be specific. Ask very specific questions, not open-ended questions, but specific questions that are based on the variables that you want to study. 
and use the literature um, to create a, a brief background, uh, summarize knowledge as known, summarize what isn't known and where we have to go, and then so, then present your your method or your direction with your specific questions. I'll turn it back over. Thanks, Charles. I think one thing that I want to add on to this, what you've just said, um, and this is a common question that I see coming up in the Q&A, is kind of a, dis a discussion and a distinction between what exactly the liter lit review should be. So I'm wondering if uh, Charles, Colleen, Laura, and Jessica, if you can distinguish a little bit between writing a lit review um, for a paper once you have done the research and the alternate writing a lit review that is done in preparation to identify the scope of your research. Can you kind of distinguish a little bit what that means for um, everyone joining today? Sure, I saw uh, yeah. a lot. Of Go ahead. Go ahead. No, oh, yeah. Charles, please. Um, so I think that's that's a very important point. So if you're trying to formulate a research program, something going forward, um, what, what are you going to do for this year that you're involved in a research project in a laboratory or for your thesis or for your PhD? You're going to start very broad um, and then narrow your, your, your research team will give you some focus. Um, but in formulating your questions for which you will then uh, propose work, you're going to probably use a broader base of uh, literature to start with. But once you've narrowed down to a question and you're going to write a research paper, that has to become much more specific. So, in for instance, in your thesis, you might have 200 references. Most, most research papers that are based on focused questions might have up to 30 or 40 uh, references. So start broad, um, as Lauren said, and then once you're writing specific issues, uh, narrow the focus of your search. Yeah, I, I was also thinking that uh, sometimes, especially when you are uh, sort of a new, you're either a graduate student or you're new at writing uh, papers uh, for a publication, that you would, um, I, I frequently will start by searching for reviews on the topic. If there are systematic reviews of the literature on the topic, that's a great place to start or other types of lit reviews. Um, it doesn't mean that you're going to, I mean, you want to see if there's a systematic review or more than one on the same topic in the last year. You're certainly not going to be, this, this This is focusing on this, top, uh, today's topic is on uh, the lit or background section for uh, an empirical paper, a research paper. Um, but a systematic review that's published or other lit review paper that's published can be very helpful in terms of the major high points, the major themes. Um, and if there's none of those, then you still have to search the literature for, you know, em empirical papers, right, research papers. And so it, it, to me, uh, synthesis is, is what it's all about. And that's actually not, there's not a step-by-step -step for how to synthesize, at least not one that I'm aware of. But um, you're trying to organize the literature in terms of themes that you're seeing. And uh, uh, so, and there was, let's see, looking looking at, you know, to see if there's lit reviews. If not, then you're looking at the latest literature. And if there's, you know, 2,000 papers, you're certainly not going to, you look up in PubMed to say, oh my God, there's 2,000 papers. Well, you're not going to look at 2,000 papers, right? You look at, you um, uh, key papers and uh, some of the latest papers as well. But sometimes the early papers can be uh, um, big uh, folks in the field that, that have a lot of impact. And once you get into the literature, you can see they keep citing Cornell, they keep citing him. So then you say, well, I got to read about this. Cor I got to read this Cornell guy because everybody seems to be citing him. So it's an iterative process. It's not as formulaic as a recipe. Um, these are guidelines being presented today. Um, uh, but they're all, you know, your your um, purpose is different if you're doing a literature review for, say, a dissertation or a master's thesis than if you're doing a literature review for an empirical paper. 
um, it, just in terms of even uh, the the length. And sometimes it's easier uh, to to think of, you know, writing a very long lit review, but no publication is going to have you write, you know, a 20 page lit review as a background for a paper. It's just not, that's not happening. Uh, but depending upon the journal outlet, you can see what they recommend. There's journal, there's word limits, and you can look through the journal to see what are other people's backgrounds look what do they look like? Are they two paragraphs or are they three pages or um, that kind of thing? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to just build off what Colleen just uh, said. Um, yeah, syst systematic reviews and meta-analyses, a, a well-written systematic review in the discussion section will criticize the literature that they've right. used. And they'll, they'll, they'll see biases or pair, areas where the, the current literature on that topic is weak. And it's a great source of research questions. So really any systematic review should, the conclusion statement should include suggestions for future research. So I agree with Colleen, okay. systematic reviews, meta-analyses are a great source of helping you hone down your ideas so that you can actually be asking new questions or meaningful questions. The other thing is if you're, if you've uh, done a search and it comes up with 2000 recommended articles, that's where you need your librarian because your librarian is gonna help you narrow your search to a more specific question. And generally when, when you, you, cite, you, you, you look something up and you've got 2000 uh, hits, your, question, your, your keywords are too broad and your li that's where your librarian can be very, very helpful in narrowing your search. The specific. Remember, it's always about be as specific as possible. Don't be vague. Ask very specific questions. Right. And so for a, somebody was asking about doing a literature review after the research is done. Uh, uh, if you're talking about for the next paper, typically the review would would come before. I think you're maybe referring to the discussion section after you you do the research. Um, uh, but I totally agree with Charles about looking to see if there are any systematic reviews or meta-analyses on your topic, because that will point you in the direction of the key players and what, what deficits they see in the research and could help you frame your, your research question. And I can't stress enough the importance of the research librarian. Um, they are amazing in terms of what helping with keywords and helping with, you know, this, this, but not that, this, 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 and not that. And so they, they can come up with, they're brilliant in terms of searching uh, literature and they can work with you and that's what they're actually paid to do. So um, they're a resource that should, should definitely be used. Yeah. And to the question of um, the, the literature review after your experiment or your research project is completed. So that literature review is really focusing on the discussion. The discussion, the, the discussion of a paper is an opportunity to you, for you to compare and contrast your results with those that are already published in the literature. And this is where you make a contribution with your paper. Um, this is where you convince the, the editors and the, the reviewers and the readership that you're contributing something new. It's by performing that compare and contrast to what's already in the literature. So that, that that's where you would focus your after project literature review to construct a good discussion. Can I add a, um, a question to this? So you were talking a little bit before, Colleen, I think you brought it up um, about the time consensus for these articles. So you're conducting a lit review, you're looking at some of the the foundational thoughts in, in the discipline, but also you're looking at what's the latest research in that area. So curious if generally, is there a rule of thumb for what you consider to be the quote unquote latest? Is that research that was perhaps conducted in the past three to five years? Exactly where does that fit and how does that fit in with the discussion? That may be, may be somewhat discipline specific, but you know, research in the last three to five years 
uh, it may be, but they're depending upon what your area is, you might not find much, or you might find 200 papers. It just depends. So it, it depends on the research question and how much literature there is. But if there's a ton in the last three to five years, then you don't necessarily need to go back, you know, 30 years at, or something like that. Right. Um, but it, it, I, I was thinking that, you know, a lot of people, uh, questions were flying by about, you know, how do you know how much literature to to include, like if you, what's the difference between doing a literature review for a dissertation versus a research paper? A huge difference, <laughs> huge difference. This this uh, webinar has been focused on uh, writing the background section actually for a, uh, a research paper. Uh, for theses and dissertations, um, the literature review section is much, much, much lengthier. And, uh, it so it's a sort of a different kind of an animal uh, because in a in a research paper it also depends on the journal you may have typically two or three paragraphs or two or three pages depending upon the journal that you can devote to that background section so there's a lot of variation I wish there was a uh, an easy you know one two three this is it you just do that um, but they're they're such different animals. Uh, uh, dissertation versus writing a research paper for publication in a journal. Very different. And just um, to, to add something there is we have a webinar in our webinar recording library on how to convert your dissertation or thesis into a research manuscript. So just a little oh, plug good. there. So that's good. <laughs> I encourage you to go back and watch that. Sorry, back over to, to you three. Yeah, so in terms of how far to go back, with the information, it depends on your topic. So if you're studying, yep. let's say a very rare disease that doesn't occur very often, you may go back to the uh, 19th century um, to quote relevant literature. If, you're, uh, if your topic is on something that's very current, let's say you were studying HIV AIDS in uh, you know, the beginning part of the 21st century or uh, the coronavirus in the last three years, there's going to be so much current research done, you you probably won't go back more than six months to a year. So it, it really depends on the topic uh, that you're that you're working on. If you're in something that's very hot, you're probably not going to go back very far. I typically am a little suspicious of uh, articles that are over 10 to 12 years old um, in my field, um, because then I get the sense that the author has not really found the current controversies. So I, I would use as a rule of thumb, 10 to 12 years, but again, it's modified by the, uh, the rarity um, and relevance of the topic that you're investigating. Right, and, and the, the topic as well. So if in something like uh, uh, in my field, if you're looking at motive, motive uh, theory in uh, alcohol use, uh, motives, you would be remiss to not mention some of the key players and, and their older work, like when it started. But it, in terms of finding the latest research, that wouldn't be those. So if they don't cite Cox and Klinger, for example, that would be sort of a red flag to me that they don't cite the big players that were developing motive theory. On the other hand, as Charles was saying, you want to have the the latest research, right? So um, it may sound like we're talking out of both sides of our mouth, but it's because it's a delicate dance. Mm -hmm. And it depends on your, your, what you're doing, you know, it depends on the journal that you're writing for, etc. Yeah, Colleen made a very good point. Um, I, I come from like the social sciences, I was a political scientist background. And so I, I totally agree, there often will be depending on the topic you're studying, if you're looking at state building and you don't cite Charles Tilly, they're going to think that you don't know what you're talking about, right? So there probably will be a balance of uh, kind of core foundational things to the research topic that you're studying that will likely be a part of the things that you're reading. Um, and probably, right, if, if that you remember having to read in your graduate, you know, student studies, 
or maybe you currently are if you're a graduate student, right? Uh, but then a balance of like making sure, um, as Charles noted, that you're looking at things that are a bit more relevant. So um, uh, don't just don't don't think that you can't cite things that are maybe a bit older if they are those foundational pieces. Um, right. But I think it's a great question um, to make sure that you're staying attuned to what is um, most relevant. Um, or if you're if you're focused on um uh, what's new and maybe like quantitative research methodologies. If you're citing something that's 20 years old, it's probably not actually what's most relevant. So depending on what part of your paper or what you're trying to think about in developing your research paper, um, right? So if you're looking at research methods, you're probably going to be looking at things that are within the past, you know, maybe five or so years. Um, but uh, if you're looking at foundational kind of like original theory development, that might be pulling from you know, 50 years ago, depending on what your research question is. Um, but I think a really great question, whoever posted that to ask. Um, but more than likely, there's going to be a balance depending on what your topic and research question is. And one of the, one of the ahead, points, ahead, excuse me, one of the points that I find in, in uh, reviewing and editing papers that's very frustrating is uh, literature that doesn't focus on the actual questions. So sometimes people will put in a first paragraph of the introduction with very, very general information that, that doesn't even funnel down to what you're trying to investigate. So be careful about that. Start right from the beginning in a research paper, focusing on the questions that you're asking. Keep it specific. Um, build an argument based on the literature, but keep it narrow and keep it specific. Focused, yeah, very focused. Agreed. As, a, as an editor, one of the things that um, we see in uh, substance use and addiction journal is, uh, you know, periodically you'll see papers that come in and the background sections have quite old, like not current literature. And I don't mean to say this is frequent, but it does happen that they're just a lot of their, the papers they're citing are I don't know, 10 years old or uh, 20 years old, and they don't have anything much in the last five years, that's kind of suspicious because it's, if, if it's a topic that's been written about, it's, there's going to be something in the last 10 years besides what, you know, much more current. So that's uh, uh, a critique that I see from reviewers a lot is that the literature is not current. Uh, there were some questions that came up on um, how to do a systematic review. Um, and I would direct people to um, the PRISMA guidelines, PRISMA, um, or to Cochrane, um, Cochrane Reviews. So those are, those are websites that uh, actually discuss how to do systematic reviews. There are a lot of resources there. And again, if you ask that of your librarian, she'd direct you right to those resources. Great. Uh, so we have a number of questions coming through about some tools for actually writing a review. So in terms of like software, in terms of any recommendations for how best to format it, how best to do it. Um, so do you have any tips here? It's something to speed up the note taking process while you're reading papers or something generally just do you have any tips as experts in the area of how best to do this? I'm hoping that Charles can pipe in here because. Yeah. Well, so generally, um, if we're talking about an introduction, which is the really the most the most important part of your literature review, because you're going to tell a story, you're going to build an argument, you're going to develop a rationale as to why you're doing your project. So the first paragraph is sort of general background specific to your topic. Um, second paragraph might be um, what's currently known. Um, what's not known. And then third, third paragraph is where you would probably develop your approach. Because of these deficiencies in the literature, these open questions, uh, we plan to do a project in which we take this approach and lead to um, the final research questions that you're going to pose based on the things that you're going to actually study, the variables that you're going to look at and study. So first paragraph, somewhat general. Second paragraph, what's known, what needs to be known. Third, mm -hmm. my approach. This is how I'm going to answer these outstanding questions. And then 
very specific research questions uh, as the final paragraph. I hope that uh, that helps the answer the question. <laughs> uh when we're thinking about like potential like software to help with like maybe the note taking okay. part i know is part of it too um i was i i mean have make sure you have a reference management system so there's things like zotero uh like mendeley uh, yeah so and no, I, I would no. recommend and that no. you choose one yeah there, there's a bunch of different ones i know zotero that's one that i use was free um, other ones sometimes have a cost with it, uh, though if you are a part of a university or institution, they might have subscriptions for you. Um, but I'd recommend choosing one and sticking with it. Um, if you have uh, frequent collaborators or co-authors or advisors, um, it helps sometimes to use the same one that they do. Also, different disciplines sometimes will have uh, different norms of which ones that they use. Uh, but if you're collaborating a lot with people, having the same reference system, um, it's really helpful because you can easily then share your citations and notes that are attached with it. Um, so that's often how I was doing like my version of an annotated bibliography is that I would include the notes in my reference system. Um, maybe that's a bit old school nowadays, um, but I think this is a great question. Also for your librarian, they will be, I think, the best person to ask these things. So again, if you're part of an institution, ask your librarian if they have suggestions about different systems. Otherwise, I think this is a question that maybe um, we can get back to individuals on um, and do a bit more research unless uh, Jess, Colleen, or Charles have other suggestions. Um, but I think a common thing we will say is talk to your librarian. They truly are one of the best resources that you have um, at your university. Um, but otherwise, make sure that you have a, a set uh, reference system that you use um, and taking notes there can be useful. Yeah, I would say, um... Uh, Lauren, you're uh, you're absolutely right. I, you want to be very disciplined right from the start in managing your references. So uh, I found biggest frustrations as I was maturing was that I wasn't disciplined in in organizing my references right from the start. And the best way to do it is to use a referencing program because it'll allow you to to put the references in the proper order for whatever literature okay. uh, publication you want to publish with. Some people will ask you um, to alphabetize your references. Some will want you to do citation by order of appearance. Um, and you wanna be able to, to be flexible. And the best way to do that is to build your reference database in one of these programs. And that gives, that gives you the ability to be very organized. So be disciplined about it. Start with that right from the beginning. Don't say, oh, I'll do that at the end. That's not the way to do it. Now, can I just jump in to clarify something? Lauren, you mentioned it as well, um, and I think it's come up a few times today um, about conducting work with your librarian and talking to your librarian. We've had a number of questions that have come through uh, for people who don't necessarily work at institutions or who don't have librarians that are available to them. So I'm mm -hmm. curious if you have any tips for those folks, anybody who might need some assistance here, but they don't have a library uh, that they're able to rely on. Well, then you, you need to familiarize yourself with doing keyword searches um, and lear learning about what the Boolean operators are. Um, and I think if you Google those, um, those right. topics, you'll get a lot of useful information. So if you Google Boolean operators, you'll, you'll get the definition of each operator and what their function is. Um, and you'll learn to narrow your keyword topics so that uh, your searches become specific to your purpose. Sometimes also, um, when you think about keywords, people think, oh, you know, how do I know what keywords? Well, in the relevant literature that you had been re have been reading, um, all published papers have, uh, they have keywords and you can look at that because they may be things like, oh, I wouldn't have thought of putting it that way. And so you can know what, you know, the, the main keywords are in your topical area, uh, sometimes just by looking at the, the papers. But you can also think sometimes if a keyword is too uh, specific or too narrow, um, you're not going to find anything. Um, conversely, if you have a keyword that's very, very broad, uh, that's not going to work well either because you're going to get a thousand hits on some stuff that's not even relevant. So that knowing what 
keywords and reference librarians can be very, very helpful with that. I understand the question is that not everybody has a reference librarian that, that they're working with. Um, so uh, they're at a, a little bit of a disadvantage, but that doesn't mean they can't, they can't do literature searches. That just means they have to do uh, extra work because they don't have the advantage of having a reference librarian suggest how to use the Boolean operators. That is this keyword and this keyword, but not this keyword, that, that, kind, of, that kind of thing. Um, so it, it certainly is possible. It's just difficult. If you have, if you have a reference librarian where you are, um, I would strongly urge you to make use of that person. Yeah, I, I agree. There, we, we bring it up because I know from my own experience that people don't talk to our librarians enough. So I think that's why we have enthusiasm. It's definitely possible to, to conduct your research do these literature reviews if you're not a part of an institution. But again, there just will be a bit more of work on your end that you might have to do. Um, but other things to think about, I gave some other kind of places to look, right? So thinking about what kind of uh, reference databases. So if there's a reference database. So if you're in education, maybe instead of going to a uh, web of science, right, you should go to ERIC. Um, so making trying to narrow it to make sure that you're as close as you can uh, to your own field um, is a way to, to think. Uh, ass assuming that you're not starting absolutely fresh and you've maybe done a little research already within your field, maybe you have your research question, uh, using uh, the reference sections, right, of articles that you've already read that are related yeah. are really useful. So go look at those. That was something that I did all the time to make sure that maybe I got additional context to what they were talking about. It helps you direct you different literature. Um, and then also thinking about, uh, as you're thinking about how do I pull together uh, maybe the right Boolean operators, the right kind of key terms, uh, if you find even just one or two relevant uh, papers um, that you think will be useful for your literature review, look at the key terms that are part of them, right? Every single research article will have key terms. So maybe select those as the key terms as you're thinking about doing your own searches. So it's definitely possible our emphasis on librarians is not to say that you need them, but that they really are useful. So if you have access, do use them, but you certainly can do any of this without uh, that kind of institutional support. Thank you very much, Lauren. And thank you very much, uh, Jessica, Colleen, Charles, for all of your answers today and for everybody for joining. Uh, we have just a minute left. So with that, I want to just wrap this up and flag what is upcoming from us at SAGE uh, for the How to Do Research and Get Published webinar series. So in just a few weeks on December 6th, we will be hosting another webinar. And the topic here will be how to create a research agenda and develop your personal academic brand. And be on the lookout for what's happening in 2024. We'll continue the webinar series with monthly uh, recordings. January will be about methodology. And February will be about your reference search. In addition, we have a journal resources um, on our other gateway. Here you'll have plenty of information about how to get published, information on in, in different courses, different resources, and we also have a Chinese translated version. Um, another thing to flag that I don't have a slide up for is that at the end of the month, we have another webinar coming. It's called Editors in Action, and this will be lightning talks from Sage Journal editors talking about how they embed DEI principles across their journals. So please do be on the lookout for that one as well. If you're an editor, if you're a reviewer, you're an author, and you're looking to learn more about how DEI can be integrated across academia. So with that, um, I want to thank everybody for joining today. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you, Colleen. Thank you, Lauren. And thank you, Charles, for all of your work. And thank you very much to everybody who posed questions. We appreciate it. And we'll follow up with those that we hadn't had a chance to respond to live. Um, so again, thank you for joining. And we hope to see you in an upcoming webinar. Take care.